What's going on guys, all of Blitzel here, back with a new series that I'm debuting today. Um, it's going to be uncut one hour of gameplay, and in this particular episode we are featuring Control. Um, I had some pretty good responses from my earlier c Control videos, so I figured I <laughs> I should keep, keep making them, you guys seem, seem to like them, so here we are playing some more games. I will preface this that I do not play very well in these games, I make quite a few misplays, but... I will point them out as we go along. Um, uh, yeah, I didn't. Overall, I'd say I played very poorly in, in these games. I do make s a couple good plays, but I think I do make quite a few errors. So we open with the Avelta. We're against Palkia. Or, yeah, we're against Palkia. Yep. So a quick ball, a parasol, and the Avelta are both worthless cards. We can find a, a Snorlax. Oh, this match is going to be really scuff. I think our end game is going to be Eldegoss loop. But if they're playing Bell Quick Shooting, then that's not really good for us. So maybe we just swoop in with a Flying Pikachu play. I don't really know. This is going to be pretty tough, I think. This current build of control that I'm playing, is it's the same list that I've been playing uh, for the last two weeks or so from uh, Sanders' Li Liverpool list. And... It's really good against the, that top meta, like Reggie's, Lugia, Lawson Box, uh, Mew. But after you, after those decks, it sort of has some scuff matchups. Well, it's not exactly the best deck to ladder with, but I don't think if, if you picked it up and played it at uh, a regionals or something like that, your, your matchups would, would be better. I don't think you're going to face as much jank, at least near the higher tables. So I will use a Chorus. I have to. Ugh, this is like this is a gross chorus. I think I'm gonna take mine double energy, but I don't want to loss on the Pikachu. I want to have that play for later. But also, I don't want to loss on too many energies. I guess we take the Pikachu. Ugh, this feels so bad. I, I feel like in this video, I had in this just footage, I had very poor luck with uh, chorus. Like I had a lot of tough choices where I would just. I want all five of these cards, but I have to loss on two of them. So we'll speed things with the Regilecki, and we have a t all our DTEs we want to keep around, but uh, I guess like, I like, well, my hand's clogged here, like, it's not, not at all ideal. I don't want to drop a Galar Mine, I don't really want to, I don't necessarily want to vacuum yet, I don't really have a card I want to loss vacuum away, I don't want to just waste the DTE, but yeah, we're at this, Snorlax will be going down. Definitely need to like Yellhorn is going to be one of my biggest tools in this matchup to force switching cards. Them spending nets early and belts early is always great. Um, they're probably only playing one belt, and if my end game is Eldegoss Loop, but between Quick Shooting and Choice Belt, they can only get up to two ten. So we need we need to have them burn nets so they so then they can't double Quick Shooting. So, they probably have three scoop of nets. Two to three. So, there is an Irida. They're having a heavy ball. So, yeah, you guys all tell me what you think of this new series. If there's any decks that you'd like me to play in another one of these series. Just a, a, a little different than just the deck profile. Like, more gameplay. And I think, um, yeah, just, just more gameplay, which. Uh, yeah. So there's the, the star portal. I, yeah, I do have a couple of ideas for some upcoming videos, but if you have any ideas for decks, a series, anything of the like, just, I am more than willing to make those into videos. So we play the heavy ball. Our prizes are fine. No, nothing super major. I just Bruno here. I maybe could have... I think at this point I'm like trying to hold out hope that I can pull off the Pikachu play because he's like only set up one Palkia and I just want to like steamroll through him with a Pikachu or something but things are not like I can't any kind of quick ball and like having the Bruno back in the VMAX isn't necessarily great. I'll drop a capture on the Regilecki and grab Snorlax I suppose, net the active and then I will. Vacuum, Bench Mana Feet, and then plus three with Gormandize. Three worthless cards. Like, we are drawing so incredibly poorly. 
There's a boss. Dang. Yeah, this is gonna be a tough one to win. This matchup is pretty bad. I don't know why they're letting up Radiant Greninja at this point, but definitely should be letting up an Inteleon in case of a like this this sucks because I like Yveltal is a card that I don't need. But I need I want Eldegoss and Regilecki and Twin, so I think the twins the odd man out here. Because I need El I need a second Eldegoss for, El for El El Eldegoss loop. I want Regilecki to recover resources. Yveltal isn't very useful. And of course we need Yellowhorn to start putting some pressure on them. I don't want to conceal cards this, but my hand's too big to Gormand dies. So yeah, this is all sorts of rough. We just need this Yellowhorn to buy us some time. Or shady dealings, like if they're playing cross switchers or rope, they can just bypass it. So maybe this will give them a spin a net. I probably should combine this with Gower Mine. Uh, I mean, they probably have an ouch to find uh, scoop of net anyway, so I don't really think it matters too much. Net or court, something. There is a quick shooting. I don't think Palki is a terribly great deck right now, or. When you, you need to, to be worried about. There is that Gardevoir, uh, like the Kyogre one that I've seen running around a little bit, that it's definitely a pretty cool deck. I don't think it's anything super special. And it, like, Lugia seems like such a poor matchup. And the Kyogre, the whole Kyogre thing is kind of a, a gimmick that like might work on ladder. But I feel like once you get, if you ever got deep into a tournament, people are going to expect it and just save their mana for for the end it's not like the lost box i guess they have cologne so it's not like a perfect um not a perfect just way, way, way to deal with it but i'm gonna gust mine and uh, like i just don't know what to do here like, i can put energy down to try to set up for a thornton play i guess yeah so i think that's that's my thought process we'll put the dt in the greninja to set up a thornton play we gust the Inteleon to hopefully force a scoop of a net. There it is. Okay, that's that's good. So our Eldegoss endgame is looking okay now because they've spent a belt. It's all that's three nets, I, I believe. So now it cannot one-shot us. We're getting I mean our deck is still a little thick, but we're still pretty close to being able to pull off the loop. We have a cape in hand. Just need the other Eldegoss really. They play second bell. No. Okay, so we have to so we need to top like Thornton for Sonar basically. We have to Sonar back our Sonar back our cape, or I think we lose. So we'll conceal cards. The capture. We need Thornton. Nope. Okay, so quick ball out Pikachu. There the Thornton is, but heck, a lot of good it does us. I guess we will Eldegoss for Chorus and dig. I don't really know what we can do at this point. We drew too awkwardly early on that we don't have enough time to pull everything off. And this is stinks too, because I don't like, I don't really want to loss on Thornton, but I sort of have to at this point. I suppose like I could have pitched a cape looking back. But now I net attach bench Eldegoss cape. Yeah, looking back, I probably should have held the the, the Thornton over the other cape so we'll float up for 30 go back into the mana fee so this isn't all bad if they have full bench belt quick shooting that's two two ten so they can't reach us so there's a knockout imagine if they're echoing horn that would just be so bad yeah if, if they're echoing horn the game's over which is actually pretty common in Intel, so I am. Yeah, I don't think we're probably gonna win this one. We fell too far behind early, and Palkis is overall pretty rough. I probably should have tried to go for a mill tank route there, because I mean, but they didn't come out like any cords or anything, so they probably have any ways to recover it. So there's a shady deal. Maybe. Yeah, I don't. Don't know what they have. They have a quick ball that can give another bench Pokemon. So maybe they'll be hitting into us. There is the Greninja. Evolve into Italian. So they definitely have the resources if they want to pull off some big play. Thornton Court. 
So, what does that mean? You're gonna Thornton the Greninja to something? I don't. Oh, there's the aforementioned Echoing Horn. Well, I think that's the game. They can just put Flying Pikachu on my bench and I can't pick it up. Yeah, that should be the game there. Dang it. A frustrating way to start off things. Yeah, could we. Can Chorus. We need to keep Berkey here, but we need, sort of want to keep flying. So I think we just pitch the cape. Yeah, we, we have to keep Bird Keeper and Pikachu over the cape. We'll all to, to protect. I guess since they're low on Gust, my hope is that that um, even if they do punch this Pikachu, they can't clean it up, which is incredibly flawed because they have quick shooting on the bench so we just like gust and take out quick shooting which is not going to happen and then i'm three switching cards in a stadium so maybe it's just stuck we can just five shot it with float up before they can pick off this flying pikachu but then if they just have rod the game's over oh they only of course have 11 cards left in deck i'm kind of toying with myself whether i want to play my sports and sisters or not um it's i don't think it's a super necessary card in best of three but as most tournaments online are best of one, I think it's not a bad inclusion. And at this moment, I realize that I can't float up even. Well, I can't float up. I can bird keeper float up. Oh, sorry, I just need. <laughs> um, I can bird keeper float up, but then what's after that? And then I just boss it and I can't retreat. I did not remember our gallant line. So. We will concede this one. Well played to my opponent. Unfortunate draws, but my opponent didn't do anything overly foolish, which is sometimes is how you have to play into control and not be. Did it was a little careless with his nets. We weren't able to draw well enough to, to punish him, and I don't. We definitely did not play it flawlessly either. So on to the next one. We are against Rayuma. I'll be calling heads, and we get to go first. That's always great. And our hand is, is pretty solid. We can bench the Rigileki and, and capture for Greninja. We're against Lost Zone Box, so that's a very good matchup. Heavy Ball, Greninja's already there for us. And no prizes of too much consequence. Uh, we will have to be careful with the DTE. Now we can capture for the Snorlax, bench the Greninja and Gormandize for three. So very strong first turn for us. Uh, we, yeah, we just need to get that solo flying Pikachu. Uh, yeah, none of the pieces are prized. We won't have to worry about, like, Peonyang multiple times. So our next turn, we're going to be putting that DT on the Snorlax. Using console cards and popping Bruno. Wow, they lost an Ordinary Rod. So, so Rope, I think we're going to go into the Regal Lucky. We go into the Frog, too, but Reg I don't have too much fear that this Regilecki is going to go down. So, they lost in the Cramorant. I don't know what potential attackers they could be playing. There's a Grass, so that probably means Amazing Rayquaza. Or, or Amazing Raikou, or both even if it's Rayquaza. Run to the Guru and pass, so on to our turn. I'll bird keeper back into the Snorlax. Should have probably used conceal cards first, but that's okay. L speed. No, I'll just put the double terror on the Snorlax. And it was pass it on. Or we can quick ball out Yveltal for Pikachu if we really want to, but don't necessarily need to this turn. So I think we'll just pass. So there's a high wisdom early. So they're going to probably have a VIP or something that they just went instantly lost zone or quick ball. Conceal cards out of fighting, so that's certainly at Rayquaza. So probably no way to get through the flying Pikachu, like not even like Dragonite or anything like that. So if we can get to the play, we should just be able to win. They didn't do a whole lot on their turn, so we're gonna right, conceal cards one of the speeds. I'll attach the other speed to the Snorlax. Oh, Peony, I guess. Don't have a whole lot we can do this turn. I'm gonna put 
Je valt zal je valt van mill tank in the prizes. I'm gonna, try, I'm gonna play it on my hand for a court man dies. So we'll quick ball out the Hisuian or out the Sydney. Because then we can grab the flying Pika. So if we find another quick ball, we can just get to the discard pile for the Thornton. We'll cape the, the Regilecki. We will then heavy or we'll lost vacuum out the, the heavy ball and we can court man dies for a card. So at least our hands loosen up a little bit. There's the parasol, which is definitely needed. I want to start like dropping Parasol early because they might play one Lost Vacuum and I want them to maybe Lost Zone it. I mean, they're probably going to hold it anyway. But I don't want my, like, if my opponent plays Boss, I can knock out my Snorlax and I'm put a little, far, a little bit behind. I don't have the, I already have to recover the, the Thornton and I don't necessarily have to recover the Thornton, but I have to recover the Parasol with a Sonar, which could put me a turn behind. Which we might not have time for it depending on how the game develops. So my opponent's already down to 20 cards in deck. Never really done much, so it's a Mirage Gate. Always love to see those get lost zoned. There's a net. It's the other Comfey. So, so they're definitely building towards something. They can't touch our Snorlax though. They have seven in the lost zone. Oh, they're gonna amazing shot us. That's actually pretty annoying. Because that is one way they have to pressure in our Snorlax. They can't clean it up with the Lost Mine, but. Yeah, that's gonna be annoying. We have to find our mana fee or just. Uh, yeah, let's we'll find mana fee for sure. So there is a quick ball lost zoned. There's a mirage gate. So they have to, they're on three gates. And they spend a, a training court. So that's a lot of resources going into this play. So they kind of have to hope that it pays off. And top of the cape, so we'll conceal cards. The, the twin, there's Mammothy. So I'm gonna net the active, then Regilecki, and then Sonar. I think I should grab a quick ball here. Quick ball or net. I should not have benched that. I'll boss the Guru to try to force, but I should not have benched that Snorlax. That forced me to grab, forced me to have another net, which is not, not good. I should have. And I grab the bird keeper. Definitely should not grab bird keeper. I should have grabbed quick ball. I, I, need, I need to grab quick ball to grab the Pikachu. So I'm not, I, as I said, I did not play these games very well. I should have grabbed quick ball. I realized it after the fact. Like, oh crap, I need to grab quick ball, but. Oh well. Still, ha we have plenty of time to get there. Just did not do that right. After you play control for a little while though, your brain just gets fried and you just, I can't imagine playing this deck for 15 rounds at a regional. The most I've ever played control in a tournament was like a league cup for like five rounds or something. I have, I've, I've played it online a ton, but I've never played it for much. So now I'll grab the, grab the quick ball. I've never played it uh, more than five rounds IRL. So it'd be a lot because you'd be playing best of three playing a lot more rounds, so I don't know if I could do it. I would take a lot more practice than I'm currently, I'm currently doing with the deck, I can tell you that much. So Ben Thredilecki, Bird Keeper into it. So every, we just, we're just throwing away here. Capture fail, Quick Ball out the Kelly Rex, grab the Aveltal, Quick Ball thing that. So then we can just keep, we hope we can just find that Thornton. Now I can Sonar for a scoop of net. We're extremely close to getting the playoff. We're just the Thornton away and picking up all the other guys. But uh, we, oof, our opponents have a boss. Things could get a little tough. We don't always see boss in Rayquaza. Have space for it sometimes. Top deck twin, which is not a good top deck. We find a chorus though. There's a Thornton. So we'll get net chorus and Thornton on net deck. Yeah, so that those two guys will keep Manaphy down and we'll just sonar for the net. And they shouldn't be playing anyway to disrupt our hands, so the only way we lose is to a boss. Boss is definitely a lot more likely than hand disruption. And I have a feeling if they were playing boss, they would have played a lot a, a lot more aggressively to reach it. So I'm feeling pretty good right now. Give a net. And maybe they are gonna dig for it. So there is a fire selecting. Benching Sableye, so they're gonna take two prizes here. But 
they rope. But let's go back into Manaphy. Not going to give him my Snorlax. No how, no way. So, I'll say I take two knockouts. But, yeah, they realize what's coming here. So, we'll just Thornton into the Flying Pikachu. Evolve into it. Put the Paras on and Max Blue and they get they scoop. So that was good game for us. So now on to the next one here. I've I've, I've watched and played TCG Live some since I made my news video, and I'm a really big fan of some of the changes that they like. I love the premium battle pass. I think it's a lot better than the first ladder just because. I think one issue that TC TCGO has compared to other online card games is like I don't think you necessarily just hand your a new like a, a new player a metal of a deck. I do think it should be easy to obtain those resources and you can give them part of like a a good deck. Uh, like getting starting with theme decks, I, I know that's like how it se seemingly everyone started playing the game, myself included. But it's just not super. Be, like it's not gonna give you a good experience when you try to take the theme deck on ladder and get steamrolled. So Gourmet dice for one here. So I'm happy that like they give you like T on TCGO right now, the, like the versus ladder does give you some a lot of resources, but it doesn't really give you anything finite to like work for. Like um we're on TCG Live, if you want to work hard and get that Eternatus deck or you want to work hard and get that Palkia deck, you can grind it out. You can literally click on that deck and see all the cards in it. And instead of just grinding for some flawless border, like who honestly like I don't want I don't care about Fort Rose, Fort Cheryl. Like I just want to like I don't really care about some blingy supporter as long as I I, I want to be able to play every single deck in format. So I'm definitely pleased with the that that's where it changed, but the gameplay is atrocious. Like I just the board looks the board is like uh, at first the problem was like it was too boring and it still is sort of boring and it's also way too busy the like when the boards changes types it's just too much like i don't think like it's way like too many flashing lights and effects is way too distracting from the actual game and i don't know how many times i've watched or played tcg live and i just look over and be like why is my opponent's active pokemon confused like that's my biggest like my ocd cannot take that like i just i want the game to look like how i'm gonna play it in real life and just seeing my opponent's pokemon flip towards me just just like murders my OCD like it is it's just bad so um yeah I hope hope I don't like, like lost something piano yet but we have to keep these other pieces but uh, yeah I, I like I like the, the crafting system a lot there's a lot of things that I like about the, the game I want them to be able to lay out your whole deck in one frame I want mobile to be sideways mobile I put <laughs> I play on, on mobile most of the time, and having it horizontally is atrocious. Uh, I wanted, like, I saw Eric from Earth Candy post a thread on Twitter, and of all the things he wanted um, changed, and I really, really liked one idea that he had, uh, um, being able to, to, to convert your own cards to credits. Like, if you just wanted to go in like a collection screen and then just like if you had some binder v's like you had your uh skunk tank v that you pulled from a uh, silver tempest and you were to turn that into credits even if the conversion rate wasn't as good that you got from actually opening um pulling the card from packs i still feel like that'd be a, a really nice change because um, i have like i don't know how many thousands of cards i have on my account that i've never even played before because they're just worthless or it'd just be another way to help players get decks easier and i know it could be kind of like like a, a newer player could end up uh, selling one of, or like t turning one of their actually good cards. Oh, we hit the Sydney, that's huge. Turning actually one of their good cards into credits and then like re regretting it later when they realize that it's good. But um, I just think that, I don't know. Just <laughs> before you, before you go, go hop into the deep end making and crafting stuff, you should at least have an idea what is what is good. But that's just me. So, that's a concession. Like I said, Sydney was just too devastating. So, it's win number three on the day. Nice little two-game win streak. 
Yeah, like, like the first lot, like no one wants to play for a Whimsicott. Like the coins are nice to get packs, but packs, like locked packs are not that good. Like I've opened hundreds of Silver Tempest packs online. Like I'd say I probably opened over a hundred Silver Tempest locked packs, and I've pulled two Lugia Vs. I pulled if a normal Lugia V and an alternate Lugia V. I've not pulled a single Lugia V star. I have like, I have like six almost RVs. Like online pull rates suck, and like you're just working toward, like what you're, if you're working towards packs and packs pull rate sucks. So I like, don't really want to not really incentivize working real hard. We get the hello from our opponent. Oh, it's a, is this a control mirror? That's funny. Um, and then they put like some GX on, and like sometimes the or yeah, sometimes sometimes the ultra that they put on the ladder is is a playable one. But most of the time, it's like Whimsicott. Like, that would have been cool. Like, when um, Brilliant Stars came out. And it's six months later or whatever. So, we'll go, we won't just have a Snorlax in, in, in this matchup. Um, there, Yavel Tall can't touch our Snorlax. We'll conceal cards and pass it on over. We're looking for that Lost Vacuum and Bird Keeper to be able to. Oh, that's a pretty, pretty amazing Sydney for them. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I definitely love the, the premium battle pass. That's my probably my favorite new part about the game. I guess buying the, the premium battle pass, you get a not like super great alternatives list, but you get like four or three wheezing. You get, um, and it's like, it's like the cool shiny ones too. So yeah, I, I think the premium battle pass is maybe only the crafting the best part of the game. And well, I, I don't necessarily think getting, like, it would be weird to have the whole crafting and trading in the same game. It's like, trading is just so confusing and intimidating for a newer player that I completely un understand um, ditching it. Like, having just to learn a whole new economy to, um, just to play, to get the cards that you want, or cards being hundreds of, hundreds of packs on release date, so, like, you spend a ton of money on codes just to get a competitive ready deck which is kind of which is definitely not what they what they wanted i i and also like just the people who i don't know like i've i've done trade sniping before it's like people who like just like spend like I, well, like sell uh tcgo cards on ebay and they'll like spend their whole day sniping and making profits like that's just not my thing like that's just kind of scummy because you're taking advantage of somebody else but i know they're posting the trade it's just Kind of rubs me the wrong way. So we're just a bird keeper away from winning or double heads. Don't really need echo. I should probably kept echoing around. Looking back, don't really need parasol. And echoing I can use to chase on an elder oscillator. One heads, one tails. Still, we have a vacuum. We just need to switch out. So there's a. No chorus. Well, are they gonna drop anything else? Maybe maybe they don't really think I, I play vacuum. And so they're gonna put Goss loot me. One heads, one tails once again. No AB ball. I shouldn't have done that, I don't think. Because I knew I'd have it all surprised. There's a bird keeper. We'll be able to take this one. Have the net to net up the active. And have the vacuum. So there we go. Definitely, Snorlax is definitely a fun attacker in the mirror because it can't really get touched. At least um, Sanders just wasn't playing a Flannery or anything. So it's kind of just where got Snorlax first wins and, her, and then it, or if they both set, or both players can set up Snorlax, it's sort of just like flip, flip flipping coins. Like whoever can chain enough heads flips in a row. So get some chess. So we're, we're, we, have, we have it good. <laughs> so we got a nice little three game win streak here. And I think it's mostly downhill from here. <laughs> uh, I don't. I think my play this is, goes significantly downward. I don't know. I don't know what it was today. I, I just was not playing particularly well in these games. This is really bad. This we have nothing else. So our opponent, if we don't top deck something good. We could just get dog. We we I mean we have the king's commandment. We're against Lugia, which is a great matchup if we. And set up and not get donked. This they have capture. They're gonna get a Lugia down. So this is gonna just gonna be just great. They have an Ultra Ball. 
out in Archaeops, so they have, oh my goodness, they have the Archaeops and all that. So they they, they have turned to knockout. They, this finds Lugia V Star. This is gonna end fairly quickly, I think. They got Lumineon. Okay, so their hand is not good, so there's well, they drop Lumineon. I guess they are worried about getting path. Well, they didn't lead. Okay. That's not a basic Pokemon. So we are going to Galar Mine, Yellhorn, and King's C Commandment, or King's Instructions, and hope that they flip tails. So, and if we flip tails, well, then all is bad. Okay, we flip heads. That's good. So we're going to get Yvel, Tall, and Chorus, I think. Not Mill Tank. Yeah, here, Mill Tank. Alright, so we just need them to, to flip tails. Or they could just have Stadium Bomb and... Okay, so... But we put on the Power Pulse. If they find Stadium Bomb, Lugia, the game is over. There's an incense. There's the Lugia. So at very best, we have 50% chance of losing this turn. Great. So there's a Summoning Star. For both Archaeops. So it's gonna go on a Luke. It's gonna go on the Aveltal. So they're gonna flip for it. If this doesn't, this doesn't work, we're actually in a pretty solid spot because they're committing a lot of resources to a pretty bad Pokemon to attack with. They're playing Vulpix, and they've had Darn it. We're actually in a pretty solid position considering the amount of resources that they committed to the, the Aveltal. But there goes our massive three game win streak. But oh well. So, I actually just faced a surprising number of Lugia on ladder today. Um, normally when I'm trying to record for uh, videos, it's just like, I want to face Lugia because like it's the best deck. I want to show how my deck does against the best deck in format. And I just hit like nothing but Return of and Weezing and it just makes me want to pull all my hair out. And we opened Eldegoss so many of these games today. Another loss in box, but... I see double seal stones. That makes me think of Dragonite build for sure. It's a little worse because Dragonite can shred through us. We find uh, well, that's cool. We can just quick ball at Pikachu in the first turn. We'll find Lax. Okay, we have one double turbo prized. We prized Snowy. All right, we got other net hand. So we'll bench this Norlax. Ugh, like I want, I want to. Save the DT for the active, but I also want to get an attachment on the Snorlax. I think I should have held the attachment. I bench Yveltal there because I don't want to get roped and pressured in my Snorlax. So we can just nag it up on the on a future turn. Our hands actually we're just like flying Pikachu energy away from attacking. We're like, really close. So they're gonna conceal cards out of lightning. There's a flower selecting. After Cycler, always like to see those re recovery cards go. Got flower selecting again. Got Psychic. Switch cart. So they're definitely popping off here. But I just gotta, gotta get to a chorus. Wow, four flower selectings. And they lost our chorus, so they must have been chorus or chorus choice there. Up to six, they might get to. Seven the loss on the first turn, which would be sort of wild. Um, so, loss on a Sableye. What do you guys think of TCG Live? Like, I have a lot of things that I dislike about the game. There are some great things. Like, I think if they can clean up the graphics, make the board look less horrible, flip the Pokemon the right way, um, uh, yeah, fix the board, fix the hollow pattern, fix the, make the graphics actually look like the cards, uh, make the board look like the actual game, and make the game like not crash randomly, make it not so glitchy. Then I think we have a serious game, and I'm hoping that the resources that they put toward it um, help help make things better because they're not putting any more resources on our beloved TCGO. So All right, I'm just gonna twin twin energy to the active, retreat into Snorlax. I put the cape on the Regilecki and Gourmandize for three. Not any closer after that Gourmandize. 
So, yeah, we just need to get to the Flying Pikachu. Like, if we can get to the Flying Pikachu, the game's pretty much over. They have to seven shot us with Shred. That's why I thought Ice Q was a little better, or a little worse than, than Flying Pikachu right now, because there's a, a decent bit of Dragonite in, in Lost Box. So, the Ice Q is not very, it's, it's not, yeah, it's just not as good into those builds. And also, against like Reddy's with, with Yellhorn, with Flying Pikachu, we're taking a knockout every single turn. So, if we can just retreat net past a Yellhorn, then, um, or just, or like retreat Bird Keeper, then we're still taking part one prize. Whereas, it just takes so many more turns to win with Ice Q. So, it's not, not as effective. There's a Dragonite and a Seal Stone for a Chorus. There's a Raikou. We do have, have to have some sort of sense of, sense of urgency because we don't want our Snorlax to get gusted down. And they probably do play um, Snorlax with. or do play Boss in a Dragonite build. They're playing Kyogre though. So it's like the Turbo Gate build that some people played at Liverpool. I tried playing this deck for, to record for video, but I just hated playing it so much that that video got scrapped. And like I was just trying and it made me so mad. I lost like seven games in a row and I just deleted the deck. Like it made me so triggered. So we'll speed to the Red Lucky. A quick ball to Calyrex to thin it, I think. We played surprisingly few cards. On that the active back into the Red Lucky. And just sonar, I guess. Um yeah, we're we can bench the, the Calyrex. This is fine. Because if we get Dragon Guild. I want to have something solid to fall back on, so. Another concealed cards. But, right, that's, we'd love to see vacuum go. Uh, because we need to, that's definitely not the right play by my opponent. They have to hold a vacuum to bump my parasol. But a lot of people don't know, know the control matchup very well, because they just don't play it very much. That's always something you have in your favor, at least early on, once you get later on to it, into a, a tournament. Everyone's gonna know how to play control. So we heavy ball. Okay, there we go. We are there. We just need nets. So gallon mine. Big ball, you have Veltal. That was other Regilecki. And I think I just passed. Or I should yell one here. No, I don't pass. What am I doing? I should have yelled horned. What am I doing? I was, I was I told you that <laughs> I told you things are going to go downhill from here. Oh, man. I don't know why I did that. That was such a bad play. <sighs> do as I say, not as I do, I guess. <laughs> Yikes. They use a second vacuum. Okay, there's no way they have a third vacuum. There's absolutely zero percent chance they have a third vacuum. Man, they spent two on Galar mines. And they didn't even get a hold of value. Like, did you imagine Kyogre? They need three prizes from this. I right, we're gonna give out some. Why did they do that? That's so weird. I guess we'll go back into... No, we go into Eldegoss here. Eldegoss is the hardest thing from our board to clear. Alright, we're okay with that. Alright, so we'll go into the Regilecki. No, we'll go into Yveltal so we can yell at This is right. Okay. Chorus. Alright. The double turbo... locks everything up now. So we just yell horn. And pass. Now, on the next turn, we can double net Thornton, our Brigilecki, into our Pikachu, evolve it, and then start max ballooning. So there's a Chorus, so no boss. If they rope, we go into Snorlax. Down to one card. Are they going to try to Kyogre us? That'd actually. They have no way they have enough energy to do that. And then even if they did, they'd have so few cards left. Yeah, I don't think they have the resources to Kyogre. That's card number four. So they're gonna Sableye us. 
There's a gate. It's all their gates though, isn't it? No, they have one left. All right, so we have this one. Just net the active. Yeah, Thornton into the Pikachu. Net evolve, attach your double turbo, attach your parasol, net both our dudes. And yeah, GG. They don't have enough cards in deck to be able to live forever with a Dragonite Shred us all the way. So yeah, this should, shouldn't have, yep, there's the game. So this video does definitely showcase how strong this deck is in the Lost Box. And yeah, so I was definitely very, very pleased with that. But yeah. So I think we won four out of six games. Yes, I can't remember. Well, we lost the one to the Lugia because we bricked and we lost to Palkia. We beat two lost box. We, we beat the control. Uh, and we beat the Lugia, so we're we're four and two. Why all these Elder Ghosts and Tarts? Why deck? Alright, well, they have Mew sleeves, that means they're always playing Mew. Nope, they're playing Calyrex. <laughs> Alright, well, we use Mill Tank Parasol here. And we should just win. Oh, there's a Parasol, let's go. Alright, so we'll capture the active, find good old Snorlax. I should just probably grab Mill Tank. I don't think they have much of any out to Mill Tank. Well, actually, I don't. I want to have Mill Tank with no other dudes in play, so they can't Astral Barrage it. I shouldn't have benched it here. I know I could have been afraid of a Marnie, but if I get Astral, I should have no threat of, of Astral Barrage, so that that played actually all right. We have Net and Speeds. We, we can float up on the next turn, have Solo Mill Tank, and should just be able to take the game. Launch Ball. You can get him to Narcissus. Oh yeah, I haven't seen Arceus Shadow. Oh, you have a Shadow Rider VMAX. They must already have the Arceus in hand. Yep, they do. I haven't seen Shadow Rider in a long time. I see Shadow Rider Arceus. I did mess around with Shadow Rider um, Aerodactyl for a while, and I thought the deck was pretty good. Has but Auto Wins, Reggie's, Mew, had a pretty solid Lugia matchup. But now Lugia's playing Cologne, so that's that. <laughs> can't really you can't rely on Aerodactyl to beat Lugia. That's pretty much Shadow Rider's only win condition before. It's just too slow, even with Eternatus. I tried playing that deck for video two. It made me so upset because it's just so clunky that I scrapped it. So, I, I've tried to make Shadow Rider work so many times over the years, and it never does. And it's just depressing every single time you play it. Because you think it, like, you saw how good it was at one point, and you're like, ah, Shadow Rider, this is Shadow Rider's meta. And it just never is. So they crawl out up their hand. So, I think we should just be in the clip here. We have two the two energies to attach to our, our milk tank. We have Benchner, Calyrex, V. I think they're not going around the goss. We don't mind. It's a little bit of Calyrex V, but we can just pick up the Snorlax and not be worried about um, the National Barrage. Maybe, uh, maybe they play Vacuum. That'd be problematic. So, oh, we just top, top deck the, the twin. That's insane. So we'll yell on the RCS, put the twin on, and about for 90 or 70. Whatever. <sighs> Alright, so. Might be a concession from our opponent here soon. I don't I don't know what they could have to beat us. Like, I mean, Cologne, maybe. Bench Medicham, that's not going to help him at all. And Money is, yeah. Smash Uppercut does not go through effects. So, yeah, Yoga Loop will not be able to go through that. Um, Go through that. Oh, they've already Alkazam, so they do have a way to get through us. Already Alkazam, though. His attack isn't that good into us. Only 20 for each card, so we can kind of manipulate that. So it has 80 into us currently. So we, we can get our we can get our hand down to one. Okay, we can put on our whole hand. So that's good. So our opponents do anything this turn. They retreat, but into the Cogrex V. And do nothing. Alright. So Sydney and Burnett. 
We actually hit, hit a temple, which isn't bad. I'll attach a quick bot, the Greninja, or Thornton. Yeah, Thornton is a word. My route, I should have played the double turbo. Now, yeah, that was bad. 20 is so much worse damage than 40. And yeah, that was really dumb. I should have attached that energy. I don't know why I didn't attach that. Looking back, that's infuriating. I just, uh, sometimes watching these replays of myself play, like, it kind of makes me cringe because I, I hold myself to sort of a, a high standard when playing. And making mistakes is just sort of unacceptable. And yeah, especially like, I mean, it's even worse in a tournament. Like, I, I, if you know me, you know I get pretty upset when I, when I mess up. So, let's route for. For the, for the two shots, so we should still be fine. It's just that, uh, like, anything sort of survival just peeves me. Like, I just, I don't know, I just hold myself to the standard that I should play perfectly every time, which sometimes it is not always the best thing. Like, sometimes it pushes me to play harder just to per pursue perfection, but other times it's it's a blessing and a curse because other times I just I hold myself to an impossibly high standard, which. It is just it's just not always good for your mental health, so. Then the underworld door a, cu a couple times. Um, the game is for, for 40 again, which is not going to cut it. So, I don't know what they're going to do. Okay, we're going to retreat into the Calyrex with VMAX and pass. So, another non playable card. This route. We'll have to Brino next turn if we don't top deck uh, like a quick ball or something. Okay, we're underworld door onto the Alkazam. Underworld door again to the Alkazam. So are they gonna we can go back into Alkazam? Oh god, no, I did. Oh. <laughs> Dang it, we lose to Calyrex. Now this is unacceptable. Well, that's if I attach a DG, I just don't lose there. Like, oh, this is frustrating. Just it's just like tr try not to cringe. C control edition here. All right, well, still <laughs> gotta keep moving forward. One, one other coin flip. So we going first. Another Eldegoss start. I'm starting Manaphy and there was Eldegoss, but like, why am I just getting Eldegoss? It's like my one or two starters. Like, why am I actually good starters? So, we're against Mew. We can capture for the Yveltal to sort of keep him honest and like so they can't drop an energy on the first turn. Be interesting to see if this Fusion Mew or Double Turbo Mew. See the VIP pass. Music pretty solid matchup. Like they only have, uh, they they can have more than four energies to take, but they have to take six knockouts total, and they only have four energies. Like so, if they're not playing Silene, we just need four Cry Destructions to win. If they, if they play Silene Pad, then they can get to that six. But we do have Sydney that can pick off energies from the hand, so it's sort of a. It can come down to Silene flips for sure. Yeah, so it only comes down to what they play Silene. We can, we can gust up uh, Genesex to force more resources sometimes. And Sydney, of course, is extremely valuable. Sydney is one of the... I feel like it was sort of underrated when it came out. Not a lot of people respected it. And, and it saw some play in Arceus. Saw some play. And it's been very powerful in control. Like Arceus, It was cool in Arceus Intel. Against me, you could uh, path Sydney. And then they weren't playing Pumpkaboo. And they didn't have Vacuum yet. So they would just be... Basically bricked out after that if they didn't immediately top deck out of it. So I'm gonna put the capture on the Yveltal and grab a Snorlax. Then the other Yveltal, drop Gallon Mine, and then Gust the Genesect, force the resources, and then Gorman dies for six. So we can cry destruction next turn. We have the, the Bird Keeper cry if he leaves energy in play. We have Yellhorn that can force more switching cards. There's an energy, so we can cry destruction that out. Chromatic. The tails, that's fortunate. One fusion strike system. 
four seal stones, so. Try to be able to knock us out. Hopefully they can't gust our good belt all. That would be sort of unfortunate. So then, we just start alchemy. I definitely might want to make uh, one of these a uh, one hour gameplay videos of Mew because like Mew's another one of those decks that's not so, like not necessarily the easiest deck to sequence ever so but if once again if you guys have any any decks you'd like to see me play for one of these one hour uncut videos let me know so play in the vacuum getting rid of our Galar mine uh did you all the Genesex already though yeah, they must have, so they scooped. Wow. That's kind of funny. So another win. So we're, we're, we're still have a, a pretty solid record overall, though. And I think this is our last game of the video. Save the, save the best for last. Well, you guys will see at the end here. So another... Alright, well, if I had a dollar for every time I started Eldegoss, I'd have like three bucks. But that's, that's kind of weird. <laughs> So, we see the little mini Han. Our hand is hopelessly clogged here. So we have to Radiant Greninja out a twin. I do the speed because I'm, I'm a noob. No, I think, I think that's right. We, we keep the twin for the Gefell Tall. The mini Han most likely means. Um, most likely means Lugia. Our hand's rough. I mean, it's no draw out. So we have Sydney, which is a great card to have. We have an early cry destruction. We can King's Commandment. So it's not necessarily super bad, it's just that I like, I, I hate having to rely on King's Commandment to bail me out because a deck like Lugia that has lots of outs to Marnie, you can just wipe that right away. So they do have the Burnett on the first turn. We find another Yveltal. Hit on the Sydney, that's great. Always hitting Auroras is just amazing. So I bench both the Yveltals here. In King's Construction, so even if we get Marnied, we still have a couple of Yveltals down. I will get other Sydney. No, well, let's get DT Chorus because then we can pick up our, our, our Eligos on the next turn or use Cry Destruction. So they missed the Raikou, they have Incense. Did they top deck that, that Incense or do they have that in hand? Are they gonna Raikou bosses? Because they. I mean, they take out both your Veltals. That's so bad because we prized one. Yeah, it might have been. She probably shouldn't have committed both your, your Veltals. But then he just takes Kyrex, your, your Veltal. And we're kind of stuck in a, a, a different way. So I still think the, the play is fine. This play is pretty greedy for my opponent, though. Because if I find one Cry Destruction, then they have this two retreat Pokemon in play that cannot attack. And they already done one Aurora, so even if they do play Speed. They won't be able to attack with it twice. So yeah, there's a speed and two Auroras. There's the boss, and both of our Yveltals will be going down, which is just horrible. Definitely could, definitely might have been an overcommittance on my part there. But there, that was not a very helpful chorus. Yeah, definitely just we'll, we'll keep the the mill tank and. I don't I hate having to take and steal cards these energies. So I'll bench the mana fee. And then King's Instruction. And I can Elder Goss, but I don't really want to retreat. I want to just King's Instructions and better my hand. But yeah, this is just opening Elder Goss is just so bad when I like I I can't I don't have time to float up. I have to King's Instruction to, to better my hand. And I just so I'm gonna get the the Yveltal and Galar mine. So I can hopefully just strain this Raikou in the active spot and just buy some time that way. They found the Lumini on, so they can just Marnie us. I think we're probably gonna lose. Uh, we have to have to draw pretty hot off this Marnie to have, have a chance. Yeah, uh, wow. Our opponent's done very well with the limited cards that they've had. This hand's not it. Did you attach an energy to an Archaeops? So that's sort of interesting. I guess they don't want to. It just got wasted away with a Sydney. Amazing shot for the knockout. Promote the Greninja. The vacuum's not very good. Well, 
I'm gonna cons I should not I should have just attached this to the active and retreated. Cause now I'm gonna spend another energy just to four man dies. Which is just so bad. I Yeah, I only have three energy left, which I mean I only only got probably two prizes left. But still. Uh, I'll grab the Eagle but I'm going to hold it. I don't want it to get gusted down because it's my last one. Where We have a Thornton to get another one in play, but no energy. But they will have to retreat or have a switching card to be able to take the Snorlax, which is kind of good. If they retreat, I'm feeling pretty solid. But we're still so far behind, and we still have this Eldegoss just sitting on our board, waiting to be knocked out for two prizes. Like We just didn't, haven't had the time to float up because they set up so well. And this play, like this Lugia, play, or the Raikou play was pretty greedy. Like if I'm able to punish it right away, the, like if I if I can pull off the Yveltal play immediately, I don't think that they can, that they probably just lose this game outright there. That's just such a devastating punish, but I wasn't able to. So it was, their greed was rewarded. And yeah, wow, this feels so greedy too. Man, I need to go to the Cry Destruction. All right, we found a net, that's good. We gotta get to a DTE. None yet. I prized one, but like, I don't really want to chance it with a Peony. I think I have better odds. Okay. Ugh, I can't keep the red Delecky. One's already down. Dang it. I guess we swap out the. We, we keep red Lucky over that, I guess. It still feels so bad. Oh my goodness. So, Cry of Destruction, the three energies off the Archaeops. And we just say GG to boss. Yeah, we say GG to boss. Finding a Galar mine would have been nice. That's eight hundred nine energies total committed. Probably have six to seven left. So that's with two prizes. Probably just too much to ask for. Maybe we'll get like, even point of, like a cry destruction Sydney is impossible. So Makes me too little too late for us. Or hey, maybe they just have a lot of energy clumps in hand. Loading up a Lugia. I don't know if that's the right play for them. Like, wouldn't you rather just speed ring? I mean, I guess maybe they boss. They're nuts. So, yeah, likely they're gonna be going down to that. They probably have one more, the two more boss. They probably have three total gust cards left. Two to three more gust cards. Spending a powerful to retreat is sort of interesting. So that's. They have 13 energies committed now. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, yeah, 13 total. So they still have 3 left. And pro that still will probably a double turbo, so. Top deck DT might have been able to keep us into the game. But I guess at the Raikou and just hope that they don't have it, which is kind of a kind of a dream, but they're angry. Do they not have it? Or they just trolling? They're sad. So maybe, maybe they don't actually have it. I still don't believe it though. The, the way they're spamming. I don't believe it. Like, just slam it down and beat me. Please. I mean, maybe, maybe they don't have it. No, the way they're spamming, they have to have it. I played too much. Put one on one. Yeah. Don't, all right. Coco Jabro here. If you're watching this video, um, you, I uh, need someone to talk to you. Just let me know if you, if someone hurt you today, um, I, I'm a, my DMs are open. Just give me a call. All right. So that's been this one hour uncut footage of control. The gameplay was so, so there were some highs, there were some lows, but I feel like there was definitely a lot to be learned from this. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. If there's other decks you want to see in this kind of series that I'm doing, uh, let me know down below. Uh, what do you think of this gameplay? Uh, what do you think of this list? Uh, yeah, I, I'm still a big fan of Control. It's definitely a tough one to pilot, but I still feel like it has the highest ceiling in, in, in format if played correctly. <laughs> you do run into a lot of jank on ladders. So it's not necessarily the best measuring stick, but it's still it, it's, it's still just a, a really fun deck to play. And it's really satisfying to play it competently, which I did not, I did not do very well in this video, but that's okay. So yeah, once again, thank you guys for watching. You made us find the video. You're you're just an absolute trooper. So just thank you for making it this find the video. You, um, yeah, we're trying to get to the one case. So please consider subscribing. I've said it like three times. So 
I'm, I'm tired from all this rambling. I need a drink. So I hope you guys have a great day and I'll catch you in the next one.